Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Family Sedan Channel. What will happen if the SEC defeats Ripple in their lawsuit? And what's the timeline look like for a, a conclusion in this case? Well, I've got perspective from Stuart Alderati, who is Ripple's uh, chief legal officer, uh, in, in terms of what the next step would be. And, and frankly, look, and I've said this before, and I still think it's the case. Like, even if Ripple technically loses, it doesn't mean that there's going to be a disaster content in that ruling for XRP holders. Now, there could be. There could be. It could be truly disastrous for us. But it could be the case that Ripple loses, and there's a path forward for XRP holders, and there's some sort of clarification provided by uh, Judge Torres in this case for secondary markets. There, there could be. And although, of course, you know, it gets more complex than that, though, because even if there is that clarity, is that going to be sufficient? Whatever it is, should it exist? Would it be enough to convince cryptocurrency exchanges to relist XRP? Because if not, you've still got this chilling effect. And, and what about the appeal process? So there's all of that. And so I want to share with you what Stuart already had to say on that. And then I've also got um, perspective from three attorneys within the community in terms of when this lawsuit is expected to end, including from attorney Filan. Attorney uh, Hogan and Attorney Deaton. Uh, and then there's also this headline, and this is an interesting one from the Crypto Basic. SEC come in and register costs companies $2 million in legal fees. So I'll just let you know here at the outset of the video, there's a firm that was able to successfully, air quotes, successfully, register with the SEC. Uh, but it's interesting because this is a firm that isn't even headquartered in the United States and they don't have a cryptocurrency, and it cost them $2 million in a really, 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 really long time. But uh, before going further, I do want to be clear, I do not have a legal or financial background of any kind. I am not offering legal or financial advice, and you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say are right. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. All right, so into this first piece, it's titled Alderati Outlines Ripple Plans If Court Grants Summary Judgment in SEC Favor. Uh, also known as, uh, wh what does Ripple do if the SEC actually wins? And so, um, and, and you know what, I, I'll just say this. I, I'm going to share his answer with you. And obviously, I mean, it's 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 strong word, strongly worded like you'd expect because they haven't lost. But should Ripple lose? I'm actually, depending on, on you know, uh, how the, you know, the, the conclusion is worded from, from Judge Torres... Because you know what comes next is the settlement portion after. So it's like, say Ripple loses. They, like it's, it's known as settlement, so the, the remedies portion of this. If you get to that point, depending on how severe it's worded from Judge Torres, if this happens, it might be the case that, you know, if it's just like, hey, you know, it looks like it's probably just going to be fine, but there's a path forward for XRP. There might be some sort of agreement between Ripple and the SEC where even Ripple's like, okay, we can live with that. That's a fine, and you guys are still a bunch of you know, uh, asshat pricks, but uh, maybe we can live with that because there's a path forward uh, for XRP. If, you know, if there's on a go forward basis, a path where XRP gets to live uh, and, and, you know, that might be enough. And then Ripple could agree, okay, well, as long as there's that path forward, we're not going to appeal this. Like, th that actually still could happen despite the strong wording from Stuart Alderati, which I respect. I get it. Like th this is the proper approach for this uh, phase of where they're at in this process. But, uh, you know, the way that they're, the way he's talking here, and again, don't blame him one bit. It's like, we're going to take this thing as far as it needs to go. So anyway, uh, Pete reads as follows. Alderati has revealed the next steps the company will take if the SEC is declared the winner of the summary judgment. Stuart Alderati, Ripple's general counsel, has revealed that the blockchain company will immediately appeal its case against the SEC if Judge Annalisa Torres grants summary judgment in the regulator's favor. Alderati made this known in an interview with BlockWorks yesterday. There are three possible outcomes in the Ripple v. SEC lawsuit, Ripple's general counsel said. According to the outspoken general counsel, Judge Torres could grant summary judgment in Ripple's favor. Secondly, he asserted that the judge could rule that there are disputed facts, which will be resolved through a trial. Yeah, and so that's, that's something that I, I think most people aren't anticipating, but in following what Attorney Deaton has stated... It's actually not a crazy idea to think that perhaps we actually will have a jury trial. So I don't know what the odds of it are, but don't rule that out. That actually still could happen. Anyway, peace continues. Thirdly, Alderati noted that Judge Torres could grant summary judgment in favor of the Securities and Exchange Commission. If this happens, 
Ripple's general counsel said the Silicon Valley tech company would not settle for an SEC win as they would immediately appeal the case before the U.S. Courts of Appeals. So let's pause a note here. Again, I would expect him to say that at this phase. But again, if it gets to the point where there's a go-for basis for XRP, there's some sort of clear path and Ripple just has to pay fine, I would not be the least bit surprised if they took it. And frankly, as an XRP holder, I would love for them to take that. I personally, I know they're the ones that have to pay the fine, I know. But I'm just sharing my perspective because I, just like every other XRP holder out there, we've all been financially harmed because of, because of the SEC. I want this damn thing over. So I, I just think if there's an actual path forward for XRP, that's that's in that's a mutual interest that XRP holders have, you know, in, 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 totally in alignment with Ripple. That part of this. Now beyond that, in terms of individual transactions, if the you know if Judge Torres comes back and says, hey, you know, for you know for 2013 through 2018 or whatever the time period may be, looks like these were you know, in, you know unregistered securities transactions. Okay, bad for Ripple, but we align on the part where we need a go-forward basis for XRP or else we're all in a lot of trouble here. And I just don't think that that's something that Ripple would be likely to walk away from. So again, I don't blame the strong talk here and about talking about appeals and potentially getting to the Supreme Court and this and that. And if it made it to the Supreme Court, fine. Like, I think it's bad for the SEC. But would they take the easier path out? I think yes, and I hope so. Anyway, peace continues. Furthermore, Ripple will also take the case to the Supreme Court if the Court of Appeals does not favor the blockchain company, said Alderati. He boosted the morale of XRP community members by asserting that Ripple would win the case in the Supreme Court. Per Alderati, the Supreme Court will rule in favor of Ripple because of its guard against building an administrative state. Quote, I would be supremely confident that this is a winner in the Supreme Court. Not so much because of crypto issues, but because of the guarding against building an administrative state, end quote. And, I, and by the way, I do think that he's right about that. And then Attorney Deaton does as well. Uh, it's just, you know, the, the current makeup of the Supreme Court, they don't seem to have tolerance for overreach of government. If, if you're a government agency and you're going outside of what Congress allows you to do, uh, we've already seen that this, this, the makeup of this particular Supreme Court, they ain't going to have it. So if it actually made it to that level, given that it's very obvious that the SEC is tremendously overreaching, it won't go well for it. Which is, again, one of the many reasons that I'm optimistic long term. It's just kind of the question of, OK, but do we have to go through that? Is it, do we? Because, you know, if that happens, you're talking years from now, this thing getting concluded. I'd rather just, you know, whatever happened, I'd really rather just have it. As long as there's a path forward for XRP, I'm just kind of like, eh, just take it. Just just take it. <laughs> you know, I kind of feel like that. Um... And then there was uh, also um, this in terms of, uh, you know, what's going to happen in terms of like the, the conclusion of this case. Um, there was this from attorney Filan, member of the XRP community, and this is dating back to this past November. He wrote, I am sticking to my prediction that District Judge Torres will decide both the expert motions and the summary judgment motions at the same time on or before March 31st, 2023. Now, no way to know if this is going to happen, but I hope so. I'm ready for this to be over. And it is kind of exciting just to know after over two years of dealing with all this nonsense that, you know, any day you could wake up and this, bam, the headline's right there. And, and so we'll see. I, I don't, it, and I, I have been kind of wondering, so like, obviously, there's a lot of speculation in terms of what that would mean for XRP price. But given how long a ruling like this would be, it does make me wonder. It's like once the news hits, hey, here's the ruling. How long is it going to take for XRP to respond to the negative or to the positive? Because you're going to need some sort of you know, uh, digestion of all of the all the content in this thing. So I guess you can go to the conclusion and see what's ultimately stated, but it might take attorneys coming out and publicly, you know, kind of uh, translating what is stated in there because a lot of the legalese here isn't easily understandable. So it does make me wonder, once we get that conclusion, will market participants even know what to do necessarily? I, hopefully, I mean, maybe it's super duper clear and it couldn't be more obvious that this is a slam dunk one, but even so, how many minutes have to pass before enough people look into that uh, to, you know, to, to increasingly place their bets the day this happens. I don't know, it's just something I've been curious about. Um, and then there was also uh, this, uh, somebody named Jeffrey um, wrote to uh, Attorney Hogan, said, you still standing firm on your March 30th date with a Ripple victory or at least XRP clarity? And this is literally yesterday, Attorney Hogan responded, March 3rd, I've gotten the rulings pretty good, but I've messed up the timing. But I'm tying myself to Jim Filan's March 30th date, smiley face. 
I hope that's the case. I am ready for this thing to be over. I'm sure sure I'm preaching to the choir on this. Um, And then there was also this, though. As far as Attorney Deaton's perspective, um, he acknowledges that's possible to happen, but he's a little less less optimistic than Attorneys uh, Filan and Attorney Hogan. And so there's this article from this past December from the Daily Huddle, which quoted Deaton as stating the following. I don't see it happening before March 31st, but it is possible because the judge is very aware. She granted us Amici status. She knows that there are tens of thousands of holders, and there have been 17 amicus briefs filed in this case. So it's very possible, but you have millions of pages of documents that have been filed. She's going to go through it. I would say the end of March is the earliest. I fear it could go into April or early May for a decision as well. End quote. So, but you know, even if that's the case, and he may very well be right, I don't pretend to know. Like, we're still in the home stretch. So just knowing that still feels pretty good here. Like, it's, it's we're going to get a conclusion this year. That's a virtual certainty. And the idea of it being in the first half of this year, also very, very high certainty. So we'll see here. Um, now, what about this, though, from the Crypto Basic? This is titled, SEC coming in register costs companies $2 million in legal fees. Now, this is bonkers. So you'll see as I go through this. It's a foreign firm registered with the SEC, but... It's a trading platform. They're not even, they're not offering a cryptocurrency. So this isn't some sort of proof that if you uh, are a developer creating a cryptocurrency, that there's a path forward, unless you're creating a centralized cryptocurrency, in which case, why aren't you just using a database anyway? (sighs) Anyway, peace reads as follows. SEC registration costs a lot for crypto firms, Fox Journalist reveals. Through its chair, Gary Gensler, the United States Securities and Exchange Commission has often called on crypto firms to come in and register. However, the path to do this has remained opaque, as agreed by Hester Peirce, an SEC commissioner. Additionally, crypto firms have often lamented the SEC's unwillingness to respond to inquiries. However, Fox Business journalist Eleanor Terrett has taken a significant step to demystify this process. No, it's not as simple as filing, uh, filling, rather filling out forms on the SEC website. Yeah, and let's pause to note here. Again, let me reiterate, this is not for a firm that has created a decentralized cryptocurrency, and it's not even a United States firm, and still it was outrageous in terms of what the cost was and the timeline. Check this out because this is bat S-word crazy. In a Twitter thread yesterday, Tarrant revealed that she sat down with INX, which claims to be the first SEC-registered crypto trading platform to see how it achieved this. According to Derek, the Canadian-based crypto firm disclosed that it filed the SEC's F1 form, which the agency requires of foreign entities issuing certain securities. Notably, the process, which started in 2018, took 953 days, about two and a half years, folks, and cost $2 million in legal fees. Oh, okay. So you just, this like Gary Ginsler said, you just, you, you go to their website and you fill out the form and then it's just done, right? Uh, no, $2 million and two and a half years later. And they're not even launching a cryptocurrency. This isn't even the, the biggest question that people have when they're talking about regist- uh, registering with the SEC. It's completely absurd. Oh, Lord. And it looks like it's in for current investors. So check this out. In addition, the journalist highlighted that other firms are exploring registration through the Regulation A form, which exempts a firm uh, firm from registering a public offering. According to Tarrant, others are going through the Regulation D or Regulation S registration process, which would restrict offerings to accredited investors. So I'm not 100% clear. Um, There's only so much that's been revealed as far as the INX deal. But either way, it's stupid. S-T-L-L-P-I-D, stupid. This is not how things should be. If you're a country that's serious about embracing, you know, the the largest, one of the largest at a minimum growth, even in a bear market, one of the largest growth categories on the entire damn planet, this is where innovation is going. If you're serious about fostering a healthy environment, this is not the approach that you take. This is complete and utter garbage. (sighs) Really steams my vegetables. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the Moon Family Sedan.